reactions and their effect. Uh, we have put some really harsh record-breaking economic sanctions on Iran. And I have some numbers here. It's really actually quite difficult to get solid numbers. And we're going to look at a PolitiFact article right after this. But imagine a country in which you've had a decline in GDP. So that's, you know, your income, a 5% decline. And that might not seem like a huge decline, something that could be weathered. But you have that decline coupled with inflation, which I'll say is 25%. Numbers range from 20 to 30%, uh, depending on what expert you ask. But a 5% decline in GDP and then a 25% uh, rate of inflation in the span of a year is shocking. It, it, it's staggering. And any economic downturn in a country doesn't affect the country, the people of the country equally. It's going to uh, have a much stronger effect on the middle class, lower middle class, and poor, while the middle class, upper class, and wealthy probably can, can weather these downturns better. Uh, approximately 20% unemployment. Um, that's also, as you've learned in economics, kind of a hard number to pin down accurately. This country, which depends on its daily exports of oil, has a drop in daily exports of 1.4 million barrels. And then hard currency trapped overseas, $80 billion. So a lot of money taken out of circulation and, and people not able to access that money. Um, also, just a, one of the many more specific things industry-wise, a 40% decline in motor vehicle production. This is what Iran felt by U.S.-led economic sanctions. So I really want to underline that when we say you're pulling out the economic tool belt, it is not uh, a middle step between diplomacy and the use of military. It's really much closer to the military side. In, in its effect. Um, it, it can be an escalation. What we hope for is that it's the sort of tool we pull out of our belt to avoid war and get back to diplomacy. This is really a, a flexing of power and when I say sanctions are a strangling of, of another country, that's, that is what I mean, that we're trying to keep them from getting the things that they need to survive. Um, so let's look at PolitiFact. Um, I have the link here too, but uh, let's click on it here together and kind of scroll through it. I'll just point out a few things and then you can read it on your own. So the question was, you know, how accurate is it to say that Iran was suffering 30% inflation, 20% unemployment? Um, and mostly true is what PolitiFact measures this at. So, you know, you can, I'm having trouble scrolling one moment. Okay, so when it comes to sanctions, they're not new. Uh, We've put these sanctions on since the revolution, so through the 80s, the 90s, but we have upped it as, a, as of late. Um, oil experts, which fund nearly half of Iran's government spending, have fallen by about half since 2011. So you can see here when, when we said there was that uh, 1.4 uh, million barrel drop day to day, that, that is our estimate. And we believe that affects the, the people, but also the government, since the government does make money off of that. Uh, lost access to the international banking system, which in today's global economy is pretty disastrous. Um, the official rate, 15.3% at the end of 2011, but of course outside experts are going to believe it's higher. And we have the same thing in our country because... Um, there's underemployment, and then there's also people who are no longer um, seeking employment, and so they don't fall in the unemployment category. So uh, you should read this on your own. It's, it's an interesting article about um, what sanctions have, the actual effect that they have had. 
And then I also have, and I'd like you to watch this clip. So this, you can stop this and then go to this clip, which is a PBS segment on daily life. It's about 10 minutes.